All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at the uh, Bolt microcontroller board. It uses a um, 18F2550 PIC processor. In this case, I've connected it to a Max uh, 7219 uh, display controller chip. Um, and it's producing the arrow that you see off to your right. In addition to the, uh, it uses a variation of the software that I use for my uh, serial display routines. In fact, it's it's really the same uh, routine exactly on clock and data as my earlier serial display projects on Arduino. It uses about the same thing with minor modifications to use a microchip nomenclature. In addition, I've got the analog digital converter connected to a 10K control. By adjusting the control, I can change the speed of the arrow. I can slow it down to basically a crawl. Or I can speed it up super fast. Alright, just a little bit more on the bolt that I may have left out on an earlier description. Here is your uh, PIC 18F2550. Comes the board light version which doesn't have the relay and the RS-232 circuits and stuff that I don't use. Uh, I got the light version. But that comes with uh, eight LEDs. It comes with a set of switches off here that you can um, use to uh, do various tests. This is where you also connect your analog to digital readings. Um, this connector in here is the same thing as the middle eight on this connector. That's RB. That's um, port B zero through uh, seven or RB0 through RB7 comes out here and over here and I think AN port A4 and 5 or something comes out over here. I have to look at the spec sheet. Um, it operates uh, the 18F2250 has its own built-in serial chip so you don't have to deal with the expense of a uh, board you can program directly. This is being powered right off the USB and it's just a straight connection from the USB right to the chip. I'll be explaining how to uh, program the Max 7219 which in this case is operating an 8x8 LED matrix. You can see the activity LEDs here. Again, like most of the projects I design and build, um, they build on each other. The nice part about this is programmed at NCC. It has a 20 megahertz crystal, but it uh, has internal multiplier, so it's really operating at 48 megahertz internally. The nice part when you program stuff in C, most of it will port over between, say, Arduino and uh, this particular microchip PIC. Uh, there are variations in it. I, w I will warn you that a uh, microchip PIC is somewhat more complicated to program. You have to use MP Lab. You have to understand how that works. And you have to use the C18 compiler, which is what I used here for this. It's going to take a little more skill, but I would argue at the same time, while, while it might take a little a steeper learning curve uh, with a microchip pick, um, they potentially um, have much more uses. It, it's incredible what this chip can be configured to do. I have been working with... Uh, assembly language on the 16F628, which is the little bitty baby brother of this one. This one I would do in C. The simpler ones you can do in assembly. Getting around in assembly 
uh, can be a pain in the rear because there's just not many examples or tutorials out there. I'll produce a few of them and I'll and the rest of this video is going to I'm going to show you how the uh, a little bit on how the coating works and uh, how do, how do you would operate the uh, Max 7219 over here. Anyway, thanks for seeing this part of the video. What we are looking at here is your basic block diagram to your Max 7219 display L display controller. Uh, it can be programmed to do a 8x8 LED matrix or it can display um, number, number data like on a calculator display, both of which I've done. And it's all done largely in software. Now, I have seen some of the examples for Arduino and they give you this library for it. And frankly, I don't know what they're doing. So I went back to the spec sheet and wrote my own code, which I feel is, clear, is more clear on how to set these up than the mysterious Atmail code that people stick up there. Um, all of us are not Atmail programmers. I'm, I'm very good at C, but when it comes to, but I'm not going to sit here and st study Atmail machine language just to figure out how to hook up a piece of hardware. So that's all I'm going to say on that. But the way this works, uh, it's fairly simple. We have three connections between, besides five volts and ground. We have the low, or they load, they call it CS not. We have the data bit in, and we have clock. Um, this is as far as the data bit, as far as clocking in the data with the clock and the DN. It's identical to the code that I used on the 74164 shift register. Identical. The only difference is, is you have 16 bits. Uh, the first byte you will clock in is going to be an address. That's going to be from, uh, and it's going to be from D8 through D15. It only uses the uh, first four bits of the first byte, that's D8 through D11. D12 through 15 are unused. If you are going to, you can attach the D out to the D in of another module and tie the clocks together and say you wanted to clock in um, something to do two of these, you would clock in four bytes and they'll go right on in. Um, so the first that bit that byte you want to clock in is your address. It's a four bit address. Um, 1 through 15, I think. 0 is not used. The second um, byte is going to be your actual data. Now, if you have, if you look at here, we have an address decoder. You can clock in a command where it will do binary coded decimal decoding and you can connect it right to seven segment displays. Um, without additional decoding or you can turn the decode off and connect up either um, an 8x8 eight eight matrix or LED displays, seven segment type, um, and you'll have to figure out the coding for yourself. When you clock in your two bytes, again first being addressed, second being the data byte, you will then take CS low which has been sitting programmed low all along you're going to take it high and then you're going to take it low and it clocks the address and data into the rest of the system. Um, by choosing the appropriate address register you can turn off or cut on the whole system. You can choose your mode which is going to be decode the uh, data or not decode, you can control the intensity. You control what is called scan limit. I can choose how many from 1 to 8, no, excuse me, 0 to 7, 
to choose one through eight digits. So I could use one digit, I could use all eight digits, or four, or whatever. Uh, the other one is display test register. I've never fooled with it. I never saw any use in it. One of the things that it does do, it has built in it has an intensity pulse width modulator. That means it's not using a bunch of segment resistors that it's controlling the uh, uh, display intensity using pulse width modulation. So that gets us out of a slew of little resistors. There's already also an R set. That sets the current broadly. You can use that but I generally choose to use um, the intensity register. It can be dim all the way to super bright. So put it from uh, something like 1 to 16, something like that. So you can read that in the spec sheet. I point that out in the program. Here is the electrical connections, if you can see it, not a lot to it, ground, VCC, there's your R set resistor, and your load knot, your clock, and your data in. And you can send them out on the next connector to connect a second one up in uh, series if you want to. So you will take the clock and connect it to clock. There should be a... Uh, okay. You also have the D out um, that will go into the D in of the following unit and where the load and the clock are connected in parallel. And that way you can put any number of the displays you want. A lot of people have used something like an 8x8 LED metrics and strung them along into a sort of a flowing scanning billboard. Here's a picture of the module that I used here in the video. Um, it's off of eBay. It's a couple bucks. Um, folks, it's not worth sitting around wiring up this crap on a proto board when you can buy something like this for a few bucks. Buy the item for a few bucks. A lot of you that are starting out don't know how to solder very well. I'm, I've been soldering for probably 35 years. But for most of you that are just starting in this, go buy the little board. Go buy the assembled stuff. It makes more sense. Well, I hope this was some help on the Mac 7219. We'll catch you later in some other videos.